বলি তাই বলি দেখা যাচ্ছে as well today i am going to talk uh, on exercise tolerance test and i will highlight the basics and then i will uh, illustrate some practical examples in day to day to day life we all know that exercise tolerance test it has got some synonyms like tmt or some other also exercise ecg test like this one basically this is a cardiovascular stress test that uses treadmill or bicycle exercise with ecg and blood pressure monitor so basically ett has got two four components one is exercise and another one is ecg and the exercise can be done with mainly treadmill that is most popularly used in bangladesh i think elsewhere in the world as well and another option is using ergometer and this is commonly bicycle ergometer but in few cases arm ergometer can also be used we have already ecg and ecg is a very versatile tool for the diagnosis of different types of cardiac ailments including ischemic heart disease but why do you need stress tests like ett though ecg is a very cheap and versatile tool it has got so many limitations the main limitation is that it has got relatively very low sensitivity though the specificity is fair for the diagnosis of obstructive coronary artery disease like a large meta analysis here and in that the sensitivity was only 23% and the specificity of 87% for the diagnosis of obstructive coronary disease and this was angiographically proven so we have to have some other tool to diagnose and pick up the coronary artery disease more efficiently that is where the necessity of some stress tests are needed if we compare ett with the other modalities of stress tests and the gold standard invasive coronary angiogram where does ett lie actually ett has got fair sensitivity of 68% and specificity also 77% if we compare with other tests like stress echo it just it was 79% and the 87% and the nuclear imaging has got to some extent better sensitivity but the specificity is, is like that of stress echo and the gold standard coronary angiogram has got sensitivity of 98% but look at specificity is 82% so this is not like 100% sometimes we can think that it may it should have 100% sensitivity and specificity but the reality is not like so among the stress tests ETT has got some advantages and current concept is that 
for the diagnosis of coronary artery disease among the stress tests the choice will depend on the indication so what actually we want if we are to diagnose coronary artery disease and the resting ecg is interpretable and it will be interpretable during stress and the patient can work up to a certain level satisfactorily in that case the stress test of choice is exercise tolerance test if not maybe the patient cannot work or sometimes the resting ecg may be uninterpretable in those cases we have to think of choosing other tests also if our main motto is to see other things like assessment of myocardial viability in that case ett is not a very good stress test we have to think of other stress tests and the other imaging modalities where does ett perform best it will perform best with those people with intermediate probability of coronary artery disease i am telling about for the diagnosis of coronary artery disease so logically we should know that what actually intermediate probability of coronary artery disease means there are some clinical as well as some more objective markers of intermediate probability of coronary artery disease what are those the clinical markers of coronary artery disease for which ett may be a very good test are presence of exertional chest pain or dyspnea these are indicative of intermediate probability of coronary artery disease in appropriate subjects but to give it more objective flavor we have to adopt some other means like diamond forrester score system this is a very easy to apply clinical tool just we have to think of several parameters like age of the patient sex and presenting symptoms in the form of whether the patient is having typical angina atypical angina or non angina chest pain and if just you look at the uh, chart you will see that according to the age of the patient sex and the presentation the patient may be placed in very low probability of coronary artery disease and ranging from very low to intermediate and just high and also very high so if the our patient is in the range of intermediate probability of coronary artery disease in that case this ett will uh, play the optimum role so it will be the optimum indication for this test for the diagnosis of coronary artery disease ett has got very popular keyword i am telling about workload what is workload workload is measured by mets metabolic equivalence and this is nothing but the basal consumption of oxygen that is uh, uh, the body is needed during the resting condition no added activity is considered in that case one met is equivalent to 3.5 ml oxygen per kg per minute and in the language of ett the energy expenditure and consumption is always expressed in mets so it is the number or the number of times the energy is being expenditure in comparison to the uh, basal expenditure and we have also known that for daily living at least 5 mets of uh, energy is required we have already known that for ett we have to do ecg and this ecg will be done during stress and the stress will be applied by means of exercise there are a number of prescriptions for doing this and the prescriptions are called protocols these are the ett protocols the protocols are basically of two types one is and the most common one is the graded protocols and one another one is continuous protocol 
the continuous protocol is also exemplified by ramp protocol this is not so commonly used uh, and I, I i am sure probably this is not at all used in bangladesh and among the graded protocols a number of protocols are available among the protocols bruce protocol is the most popular one in few cases also modified bruce protocol and norton protocols are used and other protocols are mainly of theoretical interest they are not so used in day to day practice so my uh, talk will be uh, mainly on bruce protocol all the protocols have come, uh, have got some common components what are those stage speed gradient and these also differ and along with the differences in these entities also the mets produced and just uh, uh, by the protocols are also different uh, during entity now about the most popular one that is the bruce protocol the advantage of bruce protocol is that this is extensively validated and it has got seven stages each lasting 3 minutes i am talking about the exercise phase and before the onset of the exercise phase there are some pre exercise phase and the exercise phase is followed by a recovery phase during the phase this is also part and parcel of the ett full test but during that time the patient will not perform any sort of exercise we are seeing that this starts with stage 1 and ultimately it includes up to seven stages and along with the change of stages there will be change of the speed as well as the degree of inclination what is modified bruce protocol this is very like the bruce protocol penn protocol but it is to some extent softer before the achievement of the standard stage 1 of the bruce protocol in case of modified bruce protocol there are two warm up stages so this is a softer protocol and the advantage of this protocol is that the debilitated patients and also whenever we are performing exercise in post mi patients this may be a better choice what are the purposes of ett certainly the most common purpose of doing ett is diagnosis of coronary artery disease but the another important contribution of ett is risk stratification and prognostication of coronary artery disease and also the post mi patients another beautiful contribution of ett is to assessment of functional capacity it can also give information on evaluation of medical therapy evaluation of revascularization and also evaluation of arrhythmias in the form of ppm interrogation exercise induced arrhythmia and also the treatment efficacy for arrhythmia what are the contraindications of ett i am not going about the exhaustive list of contraindications but there are some absolute contraindications like if the patient is within the 48 hours of acute coronary syndrome it should not be done in case of uncontrolled arrhythmias with hemodynamic compromise symptomatic severe valvular stenosis decompensated heart failure active endo myoid pericarditis acute aortic dissection acute pulmonary embolism pulmonary infarction dvt and if the patient is having physical debility and this is so uh, to, to to so such a degree that it will preclude safe and adequate testing this test is not suitable for those patients and this is this is a absolute contraindication for performing ett there are some relative contraindications and these in these relative contraindications if the benefit outweighs the risk the patient can perform it what are the complications of ett there are some just minor complications but luckily serious adverse cardiac events are very rare and this is one in 10000 but certainly this can occur and this should always be kept in mind how to minimize the risks associated with ett there are some basic rules that should be exercised in all aspects of life 
like this should only be done by trained personnel and the doctor should be present him or herself at the site of ETT because the responsibility is in just on the doctor itself. So I am talking especially for Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, non-doctor trained personnel are not so common. So doctors should themselves be present at the site of ETT. Focused history and physical examination should be taken and always the, uh, there should be a search for any systolic murmur in the precordium and all the available documents, including resting ECG, should be scrutinized. And during the whole procedure of ETT, the clinician and also the associated persons should keep vigilant. Necessary equipments, including the necessary just resuscitative measures, should be well functioning and at hand. What are the parameters that should be observed in the pre-procedural checklist? You should think of current medications. However, there are no uniform consensus regarding withdrawal of beta blocker. But the current opinion favors to some extent that beta blockers can be continued during ETT. You have to demonstrate to the patient what to do, especially at the onset, be careful because this is not a common practice. And the patient, especially the females may, or the elderly people may tend to fall. Ensure good quality electrodes, especially in Bangladesh, blue sensor may be a very good one. And don't forget to take consent. There are some conditions in which the ECG tracing, that is the changes that occur during exercise uh, in ETT uh, may not be interpretable. So there are some resting ECGs which in, in which presents better to avoid ETT. I'm talking about left bundle branch block like the ECG here, and also the left ventricular hypertrophy with strain. This is an example of WPW syndrome and also pacing rhythm dioxin effect, though this is not very common thing nowadays, it is especially of theoretical interest. One important issue is that we have already known that in presence of left bundle branch block, better to adopt other stress tests for the necessary information. But what about right bundle branch block? Though the authors differ in their opinion, but more are in favor of continuing uh, ETT in presence of complete or incomplete right bundle branch block. This is an example of pre-procedural checklist. What are the parameters that are observed during the main part of the ETT, that is the exercise phase? You have to pay attention to the subjective complaints of the patient, like chest pain, dizziness. You have to think of functional capacity, whether the patient is having chronotropic uh, re response in the form of changes in pulse, hemodynamic response like the changes in blood pressure. But mind it, the measurement of blood pressure during an ex exercise phase is not a very easy task. And sometimes it is erroneous. The most important component of ETT is just paying meticulous attention to ECG changes. Among the changes, ST segment changes, and also to arrhythmia, bundle branch block, and what is unwanted but certainly present in many situations is artifacts. We have to think of reason for termination of exercise, but this is very important that encourage the patient carefully to perform his or her best so that the test uh, ultimately yield some practical and better information. These are the par procedural parameters that are commonly observed during the ETT. And when to stop exercise? This is called test endpoint. What are the test endpoints? Commonly, this is based on achievement of the target heart rate. The target heart rate, as we know, commonly is 85% of the maximal heart rate. And the maximal heart rate is calculated by 
deducting the age from 220 for men and from 210 for women. But achievement of target hearted is not enough. And nowadays, the favored practice is to perform exercise beyond the achievement of the target hearted up to the patient's inability to perform any more exercise. This is called symptom limited maximal exercise, and this is now the current recommendation. So don't stop unless indicated. Otherwise, assessment of functional capacity especially will be jeopardized. We also pay attention to hemodynamic response. What are the hemodynamic responses that can be observed during ETT? The response may be appropriate. That is, during the increment of exercise, the systolic blood pressure will rise and the diastolic blood pressure may either remain unchanged or sometimes it may even decline but to some extent it can increase there may be hypotensive blood pressure response what does it mean drop in systolic bp if more than 10 millimeter mercury what is its significance it can indicate termination the uh, uh, this is one important criterion to terminate the exercise number one number two it may indicate myocardial ischemia leading to left ventricular dysfunction and it often signifies severe multivessel coronary artery disease. So hypotensive blood pressure response is very important to uh, sense. And another one is hypertensive, that is the exaggerated blood pressure response. What is its definition? This is arbitrarily defined as if the peak systolic blood pressure go beyond 210 millimeter mercury in men and more than 190 millimeter mercury in women. Then this is the hypertensive BP response. It predicts risk of hypertension in normotensives. What are the absolute indications for termination of exercise testing? The absolute indication is drop in systolic BP more than 10 millimeter mercury from baseline, especially if it is accompanied by evidence of ischemia. If not accompanied by evidence of ischemia, in that case, drop in blood pressure, systolic blood pressure more than 10 millimeter mercury is a relative indication for termination of exercise. Moderate to severe angina, increasing neurological symptoms in the form of ataxia, dizziness, presyncope, signs of poor perfusion, cyanosis, pallor, like these ones, technical difficulties, monitoring ECG or the systolic BP. This is uh, another very important practical problem that sometimes that there may be so much artifact that uh, the tracing can no longer be interpretable. So in that case, better to stop the test. Patients request to stop. This is a very important absolute indication for termination. But mind it, sometimes the patients are so scared that uh, he or she may request of stopping the test. And if you can think of these, you can encourage carefully to continue further and further. And sometimes you will be astonished that he or she can even perform exercise for five minutes, six minutes, even 10 minutes. Sustained ventricular tachycardia is an absolute indication for stopping the test. And the ST elevation in leads without QOFs except V1 or AVR are also indications for stopping the test. There are some relative indications among the relative indications, the more important is if there is excessive ST depression like more than two millimeter or marked QRS axis stiff. This is another, one important uh, relative indication. Another important relative indication is presence of hypertensive response. This is also very commonly seen during ATT. If the systolic blood pressure goes beyond 250 millimeter mercury or diastolic blood pressure more than 115 millimeter mercury or both, in that case, this constitute a relative indication for stopping the test. However, the most common reason for stopping an exercise test is fatigue and breathlessness as a result of unaccustomed exercise. So this is an Achilles heel for the beautiful test of ETT. How can we report ETT? This is a very practical aspect. There are some minimum requirements that should be included in reporting, like exercise capacity. We can express the exercise capacity 
fairly in terms of poor, fair, or good. We have to comment on chronotropic response, whether it is normal or there is chronotropic incompetence that may be partial or complete. Hemodynamic response like normal, hypertensive, or hypotensive. ECG changes, this is the most reliable uh, parameter for diagnosis of coronary artery disease. And there should be a final impression in the form of positive, negative, equivocal, or inconclusive. However, the current preferable terms are whether the test is normal or abnormal. If abnormal, in that case, you can further qualify the nature of abnormality of the test. <clears throat> now, there is no hard and fast consensus regarding the exercise capacity. However, we can arbitrarily divide uh, uh, it into three categories like poor, fair, and good. What is poor? If the exercise, uh, uh, total exercise in the form of meds is less than six, it, is, it may be called poor. It is, is between six and nine may be fair. And if more than nine meds, then it is good. Minimum requirements for daily living, I, as I have already mentioned, five meds. And in case of healthy, middle-aged, non-athletic men, 10 meds average may be achieved. And for the moderately active young men, 12 meds maximum can be achieved on an average. And for the distance runners, it may be even 18 to 24 meds that can be achieved. The most important parameter for the ECG changes in ETT is the changes in ST segment. We all know that the most specific ST segment changes for the diagnosis of obstructive coronary artery disease in ETT is downsloping or horizontal ST segment depression. Other types of ST segment depressions are of less practical value and diagnostic value as well. So what are the criteria for positivity of the test? For the positivity or negativity, there are two changes that is that are considered. One is if there is horizontal or downsloping ST segment depression of one millimeter or more in one or more leads that persists at 80 milliseconds after the J point. This is the most commonly observed criterion for positivity. And another, though less commonly observed, is presence of horizontal or upsloping ST segment elevation of one millimeter or more in leads not having Q waves. So this is another criterion less commonly observed for the positivity in ET. Sometimes one question arises: Does ETT have got localization value like the ECG? In general, ETT has got no localization value. By seeing the leads affected, we cannot say that RCA or the LCX or the LED is affected. However, if there is ST segment elevation, this test has got definitely localization value. The leads affected in the form of ST segment elevation may indicate the probable coronary artery involvement. There are some features that are strongly suggestive of positivity, but you cannot say that the test is positive or negative on the basis of these things, like the horizontal or downsloping ST segment depression of less than one millimeter, upsloping ST segment depression of more than two millimeter, 80 millisecond post J, presence of exercise induced hypotension, inverted U waves, frequent multifocal or grouped PVCs, ventricular tachycardia at less than 70% maximal heart rate, Increased R wave amplitude, exercise induced typical angina, third or fourth heart sound or heart murmur. If these features are present, they are strongly suggestive of positivity. So the final report should include the final impression regarding whether the test is positive, negative, equivocal, inconclusive, or uninterpretable. What about the ST segment changes for the definition of positivity and negativity. If we consider ST segment depression or elevation one millimeter or more 
the sensitivity is around 60% and the specificity is around 90%, so pretty high. But if we consider it two millimeter or more, the sensitivity is much more reduced to 20% only. But certainly the specificity goes very high, nearly 98%. So we have to have some balance between uh, the gain and loss. Sometimes during the exercise, there is no much ST segment changes, but the ST segment changes occur during recovery. Like the practical scenario present here, you are seeing on the left side that there is exercise stage two, no ST segment depression, but during the recovery at three minutes, 50 seconds, there are obvious downsloping ST segment depression. So the, the, the importance of these types of changes observed in ATT is that it is equally important that it signifies positivity. By this time, we have completed the ATT and what to do with the parameters that have been gained. We can just utilize the parameters we have achieved by this time, like positive, negative, or the meds achieved functional capacity, or sometimes we can give this a more objective flavor by applying a special tool like the Duke treadmill score. The scoring in the form of Duke treadmill score is that it will indicate whether the patient who has just performed ETT should undergo invasive coronary angiogram or not. I am not going into the details of this. Now, another important term is sub-maximal ETT. Sometimes the 85% of the maximal predicted heart rate, that is the target heart rate, is not uh, uh, thought to be achieved because of the special situations like post-MI patients or the debilitated patients or the heart failure patients. In those cases, we can set a softer target, like 70% of the maximal predicted heart rate. Or there are some other parameters like up to the achievement of the peak workload of five pets. These are called sub maximal ETT, and these are sometimes planned for special purposes to serve special uh, indications. Now are some practical importance. This is the story of a 46 year old man with exertional chest pain, and you are seeing the pre exercise ECG, and this is normal. And when the stress three tracing was just illustrated here, look at this. There is obvious horizontal ST segment depression in multiple precordial leads, which is a typical behavior in ETT. So ultimately the patient just complained of severe fatigue, but at stage three, and he achieved up to 10.2 METs. So the test was reported positive. And on the right side, you are seeing the coronary angiogram of the patient. This was just illustrating important, that is the involvement of the LED. Artifacts are the Achilles heel of ETT. We do not want this, but we cannot avoid this. Like the KSAR, just you are seeing in the exercise phase test two, there are significant amounts of artifacts. And because of the presence of these artifacts, it is very difficult to follow the ECG tracing. But when the patient entered into the recovery stage and it is the tracing taken one minute, 50 seconds, you are seeing that there are no artifacts. This will occur in your life every time and many times. And what, what, what should be done to deal with these types of artifacts? This is a very practical uh, solution that you should take an ECG tracing within 10 to 15 seconds post-exercise. The patient is still on the treadmill, just holding the uh, rails lightly, and you are taking a tracing. This tracing will represent virtually the exercise tracing, but because of the lack of further exercise, there will be no motion artifacts and the tracing will look more healthy. 
So the changes of the during the immediate post exercise ECG, this may equally indicate what is observed in uh, exercise phase, but certainly without much artifacts. Mind it, 10 to 15 seconds, like unlike this one. Another very practical aspect, and I have seen many cardiologists to be fooled by these types of findings. Be aware of computer average rhythms. Just look at this. This is the pre-test tracing. It is normal, but when the patient was performing exercise from stage one to stage two, then stage three, and this is the tracing in stage three. Look at this. There are horizontal HD segment depression involving the limb leads as well as, uh, uh, especially the limb leads. And also in V1, there are some, there is some HD segment elevation. So logically, the reporting physician just reported that the test is positive. But look at this, this is the raw data. In the lower tracing, this is the raw data that has been uh, uh, illustrating the raw data without any computer modification during the exercise. But if we are carefully looking at the raw data, there are much ups and downs and irregularities. I am talking about artifacts. This is probably due to motion artifact. And because of these artifacts, the computer, when performing its uh, just miraculous function of averaging, there are some HD segment depression that are apparent here, but this is due to the average that has been done from this raw data. How can we recognize this? Just this is recognized by the presence of the asteric marks, that there are stars here. The stars here are indicative of computer average rhythms. And the raw data is presented here, though it is very bizarre. One important indication to avoid confusion is you have to think of the presence of the immediate post-exercise tracing. And this is the post-exercise tracing of the patient, though it is taken at two minutes. There is no irregularities in the raw data as well as in the computer average logs. So by carefully observing this, you can avoid any misinterpretation. Now, sometimes we come across some ETTs with uh, a very uh, positivity at very low workload, like this one. This is the case of a 45-year-old man, non-diabetic, non-motensive, non-smoker, who presented with mm -hmm. exertional dyspnea but no chest pain. So he was having angina equivalent. And the resting ECG was normal, echo also normal. This is the exercise tracing of that patient. And look at this, in the stage one, there are ST segment depression, horizontal ST segment depression in multiple leads. So the test was positive at low workload and the changes were also evident in recovery phase. Like this is recovery one, this is recovery two. And uh, also note that along with the ST segment depression, there is ST segment elevation in lead AVR. So the test is positive. When coronary angiography was performed, this is the look of the LED. And ultimately the patient was having triple vessel disease. And because of the triple vessel disease, the patient had CABG. Sometimes, the ETT is reported as inconclusive, like this one. This is the ETT of a 52-year-old man, and when he performed ETT, this is the resting tracing, normal, and during the stage one, the patient complained of severe chest pain. But look at the tracing. There was no suggestive ST segment changes in this or any other arrhythmia like this one. So the only complaint of the patient was the presence of chest pain. What to do with this behavior? Is it positive or negative? I have already mentioned that the indicator of positivity or negativity is the presence of ST segment depression or elevation. 
as there is no ST segment changes. But I am also confused with the presence of severe chest pain of the patient. That may not be cardiac, but uh, whether I am not sure it is due to what. In that case, it is better to comment that the patient is having inconclusive uh, ATT. This is another example. The patient is a uh, elderly man uh, on antihypertensive drugs, on atenolol and amlodipine, and this is the tracing, resting ECG. The patient achieved up to stage four, but he did not achieve the target heart rate. So the comment was like this one. The patient was having good exercise capacity, normal chronotropic and hemodynamic response. But now I should rather report is that, that there was partial chronotropic incompetence, probably because of the beta blocker therapy. Target heart rate was not achieved, maybe due to beta blocker. BP was not measured to avoid fall. 80% of maximum predicted heart rate was achieved, 80%, not 85%. He performed nine uh, minutes of exercise, no significant ST change occurred during exercise or recovery. This is another example of inconclusive for evidence of exercise induced or myocardialis. Monor Bhai. Yes. After the Jagged slide tag, sorry, intervene for our journal. Should look like a question, I shall arise for a Tamar Matha. So, a cane up near Monocor up near to stress test called Lenemung Shekhane, patient. আপনার ইকেজি চেঞ্জ নাই অথবা চেস্ট পেইন নাই কিন্তু তার ক্রোনোট্রপিক ইনকম্পিটেন্স আছে অথবা আপনার অন্যান্য হেমোডাইনামিক প্যারামিটার্স যেমন আপনার হয়তো ওয়ার্কলোড রিচ করতে পারেনি হার্ট রেট রিচ করতে পারেনি হাউ উইল ইউ প্রসিড फ्रॉम হিয়ার এখান থেকে আপনি নেক্সট কি করবেন ডু ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু ডু অ্যানাদার সর্ট অফ ইমেজিং গাইডেড স্ট্রেস টেস্ট অর ডু ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু ডু মেডিকেল ম্যানেজমেন্ট অর ডু ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু ডু um, a coronary angiogram, how do you usually proceed in, in scenarios like this? Uh, I have to interpret this uh, in the context of background beta blocker therapy. And I am thinking that the patients, this sort of behavior in, the, in, in ETT is due to beta blocker. But because of the fixed criteria, I cannot declare it to be positive or negative. Right. So it is inconclusive. If I am still suspicious of the presence of coronary artery disease, in that case, I have to take the help of other modalities like CT angiography or other things. Okay. But Are if I am assessing the exercise capacity or functional capacity, then I am pretty sure that the patient is having good exercise capacity. And he or she can perform heavy driving or like these things. যেমন আমাদের একটা কোশ্চেন এসেছিল সে কোশ্চেনটা ছিল যদি پیشنট বেটা ব্লকারে থাকে ইজ देयर এনি রিভাইজ টার্গেট অফ হার্ট রেট অর সামথিং देयर আর সাম পেপারস রিগার্ডিং দিস বাট নো ফাইনাল কনসেনসাস ইজ প্রেজেন্ট আপ টু দিস টাইম আর আপনার যদি এই স্ট্রেস টেস্টের সময় যে ট্রানজিয়েন্ট যদি কোনো ইসিজি চেঞ্জ হয় सपोज কারো леফট বান্ডল ব্রাঞ্চ ব্লক ট্রানজিয়েন্টলি দেখা দিল অথবা হয়তো আপনার a lot of multiple pvcs or small non sustained ventricular tachycardia she khetre apnar um, uh, interpretation ta ki rokom je uh, patient should get another form of study or patient should go for an angiogram i have some practical examples just uh, in the subsequent slides okay okay can i continue sure sure okay okay thank you now this is Another example of positive ETT in presence of right bundle branch block. Look at this. This is the pre-test ECG. And it is, the patient is having right bundle branch block, rather complete right bundle branch block. And when ETT was going on, this is stage one, and then stage two. Uh, this is stage one, and this is in recovery. In the recovery, just you are seeing that there is horizontal ST segment depression which was not present in resting ECG, and also ST segment elevation in AVR. In this particular case, in presence of complete right bundle branch block, there are obvious, that is telltale features of positivity of the ET. Yeah. And the changes are even more apparent, more pronounced during the recovery two, that is at the end of six minutes, recovery three rather. Another, Important example, practical example. This was the story of a 53-year-old man, diabetic, smoker, 
ETT was being performed at NICVD for screening of coronary disease. And the patient complained of chest pain during stage two. And this is the tracing. Look at this. There are ST segment elevation in multiple limbs. So the test was stopped, but the ST segment persisted and even increased in magnitude and persisted in recovery. And when the troponin assay was done, the patient was found troponin positive. So this is an example where there was myocardial infarction during ETT. So these types of catastrophe can occur in one in 10,000, mind it. This is an example of equivocal ETT. This is ETT done in 38 year old gentleman. This is pre-test tracing. And here stage four, there are some ST segment depression, but mind it, the ST segment depression is mainly up sloping, but probably this is persisting maybe up to 60 milliseconds after the J point. So how to report this? We have to consider performing stage four and also these sorts of changes. And the patient has achieved target heart rate. So this is not inconclusive. We can just report this as equivocal. Sir, so, director point, I mean to bowl a jai, Dr. Monwarto Shopsoma Jeba, Balo Bolse, ask you to Balo Bolse and in details. The, my observation is one is that the in the current scenario in the management and the diagnosis of the chronic coronary syndrome, the exercise tolerance test has been very much downgraded. That is, the, it is important for rule in of the uh, suspected coronary artery disease, but very little role in the uh, rule out the coronary artery disease. Another thing is the predictive value, which we are used to do. The, not only the sensitive this sensitivity and specificity, also the predictive value, which depends on the extent of the coronary artery disease. When you have got the left main disease or the triple vessel disease, its sensitivity is very high, as well as the specificity is also high. So it depends on the extent of the coronary artery disease. Another. It is not very much discussed, but Dr. Monwar was once mentioned that the height of the ROF, it is also one of the parameters that can be counted. And the previously it was very much counted. Nowadays it is not so much, uh, it gets important. This one, another is that the very important is the six minute walk test, which should be always to be discussed. Six minute walk test will, uh, will not disappear from the clinical practice because it is an important test for the uh, follow-up and the uh, therapeutic uh, assessment of the uh, pulmonary hypertension for the heart failure patients. And so six-minute walk test is not that much popular in Bangladesh. I don't know what are the reasons, but uh, the it should be popularized to assess the pulmonary arterial hypertension as well as the heart failure patients. Uh, with this th few things, this is my uh, just observations uh, following the lectures of uh, Dr. Monoir. And uh, there's the uh, utility of it in the, uh, in the assessment of the arrhythmias. In our student life, the, when there is a arrhythmia and this is a steep, the, our teacher asked us to do some exercise and un, uh, or what is called non-standardized exercise. Ask the patient to just walk and down, and then they, you see if the arrhythmia disappeared, uh, we are taught that this is non-significant of the arrhythmia. But still now in the exercise test, when the arrhythmias develop or increases, then we can assume that the patient has got the ischemic heart disease. This is also important. And another, uh, thing is that the when there is a, a uh, what is called 
um, that is you cannot conclude what is they will be the interpretation then i think the for the present guideline we should go to the uh, ct angiogram and they actually the guidelines said first the ct angiogram and then but in our country due to the availability and affordability the ct angiogram is, is still to be uh, popular for the diagnostic purposes of the chronic uh, coronary syndrome with these few words and with the, again the thanking the uh, organizers particularly dr mashrafi as well as dr tasveer also on me and so all these organizers i express my thanks to uh, inviting me to join the uh, this session and i hope that i could have be there for the longer time but due to some personal reasons i have to leave it thank you very much and thank you the speaker and i will miss the presentation of dr rabia khatun <laughs> so, so, thank you thank you sir thank, thank you sir, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, was, uh, actually, uh, we will take a few more comments. Uh, so I'd like to request Professor Wadud, Wadud, Wadud sir, uh, to make some comments on uh, this lecture. I'm going to comment on what? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, hand one. Okay, comment on it. The most important thing is to put the Madhunda sir's comment on it. The ETT Importance ta kundi kamra beshi devo. Ami iti iti kora be pay student the tinte jinish poli. The ek number e tu buche na tu mi kano iti iti korte dicho. Ete ki tu mi connected is proof kora chuno na ki functional capacity dekhar chuno. Ekhon ekta rogi chest pain achi. Tar dudi na ki ekta typical unstable engine ne episode hoye gachi. Tar pura ami ta ki iti iti korte dila. Ita hamogi. তাকে আমি এমআই করার দিকে ঠেলে দিচ্ছি এবং আমাদের দেশে এরকম একাধিক বার ইনসিডেন্ট ঘটেছে কারণ হিস্ট্রিটা প্রপারলি নেওয়া হয়নি দুই নম্বর একটা রোগী সে বলছে যে আমি দোতলায় উঠলে আমার খারাপ লাগে ওর ফাংশনাল ক্যাপাসিটি খুব খারাপ তাকে আমি টিটি করতে দিচ্ছি কেন সে তো করতেই পারবে না ঠিক মতো আমি ইনকনক্লুসিভ একটা রেজাল্ট নিয়ে পয়সাটা খরচ করার কোনো মানে তো নেই তাকে আমি আইদার একটা পারফেকশন ইমেজিং করতে দিব অথবা সরাসরি এনজিগাম করতে বলবো আমি যদি মনে করি তার পি টেস্ট প্রবাবিলিটি অনুযায়ী রিসপেক্ট অনুযায়ী তার কর্নাটিক ডিসার সম্ভাবনা বেশি এটা আমার কিন্তু বোঝা উচিত দু নম্বর ইটিডি যখন করতে যাব তখন উদ্দেশ্যটা কি একটা জিনিস ওই রুল ইন রুল আউট করা ছাড়াও যে আমি যেন নিরাপদে জিনিসটা করে দিতে পারি বলছে বটে যে বলছে যে ওয়ান ইস টু মানে টেন থাউজেন্ড একটা ক্যাজুয়ালিটি ঘটে আমার দেশে কি তাই আমার দেশে কিন্তু তার থেকে একটু বেশি আমি সেটা খুব বিপজ্জনক ব্যাপার হয়ে যায় মাঝে মধ্যে মনে হয় একটু হাসবে কিন্তু আসলে তো এসে একাধিক ঘটনা দেখেছে আমি ইনসিডেন্সের হিসাব করলে আমাদের দেশে এটা ইনসিডেন্স বেশি তার মানে আমরা প্রপার অ্যাসেসমেন্ট করতে পারি না কতগুলো শর্ত আছে আমি ভালো করে ইসিটা দেখব ভালো করে ইকোটা দেখব এই ইটিটা ইন্টারপ্রেট করতে পারবো কি না সেটা আমি অ্যাসেস করে তারপর তো আমি করবো আরেকটা যেটা আমি প্রবলেম দেখি আমাদের দেশে আমি এটিটি কতটুকু পর্যন্ত করাবো একটা রুগী দিব্যি করতে পারছে আমি তার হার্ট রেট পৌঁছালো আমি বন্ধ করে দিলাম লাভটা কি হলো তাকে ওইটুকু হার্ট রেটে তার ফাংশন মানে হার্ট রেট টার্গেট রিচিভ করলো কিন্তু আমি তার ফাংশনাল ক্যাপাসিটি কি দেখলাম সেটা তো দেখা হলো না ফাংশনাল ক্যাপাসিটি দেখাটা সামনে তো ইম্পর্টেন্ট না একটা রুগী যদি থার্টিন ম্যাটস এর উপরে করতে পারে বলা হয় রুগীর যদি খুব অন্য কোনো কারণ না থাকে তাহলে অ্যান্টিগাম করা উচিতই না কারণ তাকে করে তুমি সেই মেডিকেল ট্রিটমেন্টই দিতে হবে তো তুমি সেটাতে এমনিতেই দিতে পারছো কেন করতে গেলে অ্যান্টিগাম করতে গেলে কেন কাজে আমি তার ফাংশনাল ক্যাপাসিটি দেখাটা প্রপারলি সেটা খুব ভালো করে আমার এসমেন্ট করা উচিত দু নম্বর হচ্ছে যে পেশেন্টের যে কোনো দিন অভ্যস্ত না তাকে ভালো করে এক্সপ্লেনেশন করি নাই শুরুতেই হার্ট রেট উঠে গেল ওয়ান টোয়েন্টি আমি তিন মিনিটের মধ্যে তার হার্ট রেট উঠে গেল একশো চল্লিশ একশো পঞ্চাশ একশো ষাটের কাছে উঠে যায় এবং পাঁচ মিনিটের মধ্যে আমি বন্ধ করে দিচ্ছি সেই রুগী তাহলে লাভ হলো কি ইনকনক্লুসিভ একটা রেজাল্ট নিয়ে তাকে আসলে আমি কিছুই না ঘটকা না ঘটকা কিছুই দিতে পারছি না এটা কিন্তু আমরা প্রায় দেখি আরেকটা প্রবলেম দেখি রুগীর কিন্তু এটি নেগেটিভ সবই তার নর্মাল আছে অথচ রুগীর বর্ণনা অনুযায়ী টিপিক্যাল তার এনজয় না হচ্ছে যখন এরকম হয় 
তখন আমার জেম চৌধুরী স্যারের একটা ডায়ালগ মনে পড়ে বাবা তোমার ক্লিনিক্যাল চার্জমেন একদিকে আর রিপোর্ট অন্যদিকে রিপোর্ট ছুঁড়ে ফেলে দাও কারণ সেক্ষেত্রে প্রায় দেখব আমরা যে রুগী আসলে ট্রিপল सम्भवना कम অথবা বেশি অ্যাবসলিউট কথা বলা কিন্তু ক্ষমতা আমাদের এখানে নেই দ্যাট উই হ্যাভ টু আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড এটা আমাদের যারা জুনিয়ররা করছেন তারা কিন্তু এটা ভালো করে বোঝা উচিত আমি কেন করব কি করব কিভাবে ইন্টারপ্রেট করব এই তিনটা জিনিস আমরা থাকতে পারি এটিটিটাকে আমি খুব চমৎকার ভাবে ব্যবহার করতে পারব थैंक यू স্যার বড় স্যার আমরা একটু যদি ডক্টর <laughs> থিঙ্ক moderate or severe anemia sometimes ATT may be false positive there may be st segment changes because of the relative ischemia in presence of low hemoglobin so you have to repeat the test after correction of the anemia or you have to think of adopting other tests so we are uh, end of this session i mean uh, the first lecture I take the last question from Dr. Muhammad Mustafa Al-Rasul. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for giving me uh, the opportunity to ask a question. Uh, uh, at first, I would like to uh, uh, express my gratitude to our uh, Honorable uh, Dr. Muhammad Al-Islam, sir. We enjoyed your lecture as we always do. Uh, uh, it was a very brilliant lecture. So, sir, my uh, question to you is, uh, what about the uh, medication uh, before Uh, doing ETT. Uh, sub, uh, in, uh, in different texts or different sources, there are different opinions regarding beta blocker or anti-anginal medications like uh, nitrates and also uh, about digoxin. So how can uh, we prepare the patient uh, regarding their medications before doing ETT? Uh, this is my first question and I have another question uh, regarding uh, uh, the use of ETT, uh, uh, exercise tolerance in case of valvular disease patient. Thank you, sir. Both the questions are very important. Uh, I have given some highlights on the medications, especially the medications that can influence hemodynamics or the coronary status. There may be a chance of interference with these medications. Most important is beta blocker, but also non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers and also nitrate. This may interfere with the interpretation also to some extent digoxin. Regarding beta blocker, some authority uh, just uh, advocate that the drug should be withheld at least 48 hours uh, uh, before doing ETT. But the others uh, are in favor of continuing the drug because uh, there may be chance of 
जस्ट रिबाउंड इश्किमिया इन केस ऑफ विड्रॉल ऑफ द बीटा ब्लॉकर एंड वन इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट एंड अनदर वन सम आल्सो क्लेम दैट इन कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ बीटा ब्लॉकर देयर मे बी रादर मोर regular smooth evidence of st segment depression if there is actually uh, ischemia obstructive coronary artery disease and another one regarding sir a uh, use of valvular uh, heart disease valvular heart disease valvular heart disease in case of known severe obstructive valvular heart disease like severe aortic stenosis and hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy with high gradient this test is contraindicated and this should not be done but in case of mild to moderate stenotic lesions this test can be carried out with caution and sometimes there may be help in making decisions whether that apparent mild or moderate stenotic lesions should be dealt with aggressively or with interventions thank you sir right. so should we a uh, last day ki pattai hocche je kon jehetu ami oi tabar er age tabar sadhanto indicated uh, for severe symptomatic aortic stenosis and if there is someone with severe aortic stenosis by echocardiographic criteria but he doesn't have symptoms sometimes we send them for exercise to see whether they develop any symptom or there is a drop in blood pressure or not and if that happens then we say yes this patient needs the management and then we think about going for either valve replacement or tabar procedure yes thank you thank you uh, thank you sir uh, this is a very uh, elaborate presentation on exercise tolerance test so because of time shortening we have to Uh, move to the next speaker. I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Rabia Khatun for her presentation. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to talk to you. Um, I will be talking mostly about the, my clinical practice here in UK. So, if I am talking too much uh, about um, the UK perspective, please uh, stop me and. Uh, let me know about the perspective of the test and uh, current situation in bangladesh uh, let me share my screen can everyone see my screen yeah we can see <clears throat> thank you So today I'll be talking about uh, cardiac imaging, uh, non-invasive test for ischemia. Um, uh, Monor Bhai, uh, Dr. Monor already uh, spoke to you about uh, uh, exercise um, ECG tests. So I'll be talking about two other things that we often use in ischemia. So um, this is a nice guideline, which is a National um, Institute of Clinical Excellence guideline in UK-based uh, paper. um and nationally adopted by um most of the physicians um in 2016 um they said uh, people confirmed with coronary artery disease um should get non invasive functional test and exercise ecg may be used instead of a functional uh, imaging um the first line test should be a heart flow ffr ct um and if the if these are not possible then you can offer non invasive functional imaging which is um uh, 64 uh, slice cardiac ct angiography um you may consider when offering non invasive functional imaging uh, myocardial perfusion imaging is uh, again um uh, suggested if that is not available you can also go for stress echocardiography or if you have more facilities to have fast pass uh, contrast enhanced um, mri scan or mr imaging for stress induced valve motion abnormalities you can use them now um because mri scans are very expensive they are not uh, recommended by uh, nice to use as a diagnostic tool to diagnose stable angina or uh, uh, chronic coronary syndrome 
And again, uh, as uh, uh, the previous speaker already highlighted, as well as uh, Mojum Dashtar, uh, that exercise ECG to diagnose or exclude stable angina for people uh, with known coronary artery disease is not used here in UK. Uh, so what about ESC? So ESC also says that when you're uh, assessing someone with a chest pain, uh, chronic, uh, chronic stable angina, then assess your symptoms and perform baseline clinical investigation. Do you think this is an unstable angina? So if you think this is an unstable angina, uh, you should follow um, acute coronary syndrome uh, pathway. If you think there is... Um, lots of comorbidities and your um, symptoms are rather stable, you can look for uh, restoring their quality of life and go for revascularization uh, for medical therapy if the revascularization is futile. If those, that is not the case, then you can look for resting ECG by chemistry chest x-ray and selected patients um, and then echocardiography at rest. If uh, left ventricular systolic function is preserved, uh, then you can go for other modalities of the test. If the left ventricular ejection fraction is um, more than 50%, you should carry on with your pre-test uh, probability and clinical likelihood of coronary artery disease. So again, if the clinical probability is on the intermediate group and patient is otherwise low risk, uh, you should go for coronary CT and geography. Okay, uh, so if... ESC also tells that uh, your CT and geography should be the first line test to diagnose uh, stable and chronic uh, coronary syndrome. And if you think that patient, um, you do not want to know about their uh, angina, you want to just treat them rather than knowing their coronary anatomy, you can go ahead and treat their uh, uh, symptoms and then reassessing the patient and uh, request the test as uh, necessary. So if you're going for a CT coronary angiography in your uh, intermediate uh, probability of um, uh, patients uh, and uh, if it is not available, then go for ischemia testing. If you think that this is a very high risk case and you're not going to achieve much with um, CT coronary angiography, you can go for direct coronary angiography. So, I'll skip this slide um, for uh, time purposes. So, uh, I'm just directly going through the stress echocardiography. So, um, I've got the picture images uh, that uh, how we often do um, perform the exercise um, echocardiography or, and uh, dobutamine stress echocardiography. On the first picture, you can see this uh, uh, echocardiographer or a physician cardiologist performing an um, uh, DSC. You should do an echocardiogram as normal, try to get an IV access and uh, capture the continuous images throughout the stress protocol. Or uh, for uh, exercise stress test, we, oft, uh, we most commonly use here in UK is a semi-supine uh, exercise bicycle when uh, the patient continuously goes on the exercise bike and you continuously acquire images. Okay, so dobutamine stress echocardiogram, um, often you will uh, supplement uh, or augment the heart rate with atropine. Uh, I'll go into atropine use uh, on my later slides. Uh, it is, um, other than... Um, assessing for your uh, stable angina, it's very important when you to differentiate uh, your discordant uh, severe uh, severity of aortic stenosis, especially the low flow, low grade aortic stenosis, or um, uh, normal flow, normal gradient severe aortic stenosis. Uh, you can assess for LV dysfunction to get the LV reserve viability assessment, and uh, often. Uh, for pulmonary hypertension diagnosis. Exercise stress echocardiogram, again, is a very good test. And I would say uh, this should be a preferred uh, form of stress echocardiography for those who can exercise. Uh, it gives you a very good assessment of uh, functional status of the patient 
along with their echocardiographic changes. Uh, I have used it so many times along with other indications of uh, your uh, dobutamine stress echocardiogram, but I find it very useful to diagnose. Uh, sometimes you can see the mitral regurgitation, which is always seeing um, uh, moderate in range, doesn't look severe in any um, other um, uh, forms, but the patient is coming with recurrent pulmonary edema. You can sometimes reassess this. Um, and uh, some centers uh, or some physicians who are very much um, I, uh, believe in diastolic uh, dysfunction and wants to diagnose diastolic dysfunction, uh, they love the semi supine exercise bike to diagnose HEFPEF or diastolic dysfunction. So this is the usual protocol for a, a DSC. So uh, at rest, you should take the rest images uh, once the patient is connected and everything. So you should get, uh, assess their LV function. Is there any baseline regional wall motion abnormality? If you're asking for valves study, then you should also look for stroke volume, your valve gradient, and if you can calculate the aortic valve area. Same uh, protocol, um, like every stress protocol, you have to ramp up. So and then you start your dobutamine at five micrograms um, per uh, uh, hour, and you follow the same protocol to look at the LV function, regional wall motion abnormalities, stroke volume, uh, gradient across the valve, and your aortic valve area. Then you gradually go up from uh, five to maximum up to 40 micrograms per kilogram per minute, and uh, follow the same image sequences as before. And then on recovery, you do the same, okay? Uh, for uh, time purposes and the question you're asking, you can cartel your um, uh, sequences. Uh, I normally have a preset protocol that is saved on my computer. Uh, for If I'm looking for a valve, I will have a valve protocol where I'll be looking at the gradients and stroke volume aortic valve area at the baseline. I'll probably will not look at uh, the valve area and the gradients in my middle phases. I'll go and look for those on my peak uh, phase and calculate those. Or sometimes I've done is I've taken those images, but I did not analyze. I analyzed uh, for the rest and the peak. Um, I often do not take any recovery images if the test is negative. As I said, in UK, our general practice is to offer uh, stress echocardiography in a very low risk patient. So uh, what uh, we usually do on my uh, stress echo lab. Uh, so first of all, your patient selection is very important. And uh, Dr. Monwar has uh, spoken in length about the patient selection. Uh, once you prepare the patient and request the test, it's your responsibility to stop the rate limiting drugs. Um, we practice it all the time that we do not do our stress echocardiogram if you're looking for angina to diagnose the functional assessment of a patient. Um, uh, most of the time, we do not do the exercise test on beta blocker uh, rate limiting drugs. Anti-anginas, I don't stop anti-anginal medications, but I do stop the uh, rate limiting drugs. And then uh, once the patient comes in, you should get an IV access, get a baseline 12 bit ECG and a blood pressure. I uh, almost 100% of my cases, I will use contrast uh, to have the myocardial enhancement. And then you have to think about your probe optimization, acquire your baseline images, low dose images and peak dose and then recovery. Uh, the um, for uh, angina the, for the question to get angina I will have my sequences apical four chamber view apical two chamber three chamber um, parasternal long axis and parasternal short axis at papillary muscle level and that should continue throughout the um, uh, stages your heart rate and blood pressure should be monitored in every single stage with ECG monitoring. Um, I use atropine to augment the heart rate uh, in uh, early phases. Um, most of the time on the beginning of 20 mics, I will start a small dose of atropine or um, sometimes earlier. 
for example, uh, last week I had a couple of patients coming on the same list who did not stop their beta blocker. And I know that if I'm going to stress them and continue stressing them, I will never achieve the target heart rate. And dobutamine um, is a very safe drug, but it's not that safe when you're going beyond or around 40 mics. So uh, in my 300 stress echocardiograms that I've performed, I've hardly gone to 40 mics. So I try to minimize the uh, hypotensive and uh, vagal response from dobutamine and often use atropine much more early phase. As soon as I acquire the baseline images and low dose stress, I give the atropine and then carry on. Now, um, say for example, I have finished taking all the pictures and um, no adverse uh, um, complications has happened during the test. Um, if the patient has got some symptoms, of course, uh, I'll give IV uh, beta blockers or give sublingual GTN. If there is no significant symptoms, rarely I will give beta blockers, especially uh, if the COPD patient or they achieved more than 100% of the target heart rate and there's a time pressure and the nurses will not monitor the patient until the heart rate to come down to baseline, I'll use a small dose of beta blocker. And then it's your job to uh, analyze all images. It, um, it is much better to have frame by frame that you have your apical four chamber, four pictures or five pictures, and then two chamber, three chamber, plaques and uh, short axis images. Often, uh, if you're using atropine, uh, make sure a patient does not have glaucoma. I do not give uh, atropine to any patients who has got any form of glaucoma, whether it's open angle glaucoma or closed angle glaucoma, I do not give them. Uh, complications, as I said, since I have experienced myself and used atropine early, I have virtually uh, has not seen much, uh, nothing more than uh, two of each of those side effects uh, in my practice. So um, your blood pressure could either go up or low. Uh, you can develop arrhythmia like the exercise test. Um, you can have angina. Rarely, rarely, if you're unlucky and not selecting the right patient, you can induce myocardial ischemia and myocardial infarction. Um, I'm very fortunate in UK that uh, wherever I work, uh, I had a access to the cath lab or the network around me to transfer the patient for um, uh, urgent revascularization, but it hasn't happened in my own list. Um, there is one or two cases that I come across who has got allergic reaction to the sonoview, and atropine usually will cause a dry mouth and blood vision. All of these uh, are very minor side effects and usually wears off as soon as you stop the dobutamine and atropine. Patients uh, are often advised not to drive um, because of the visual impairment and someone should drive them back home. Okay, so what are the um, good things about uh, dobutamine stress echocardiogram? So number one, this is a non-invasive test, very tolerable test. It has got a very good sensitivity and specificity uh, almost equal to the myocardial perfusion scan, um, both around 75 to uh, 90%. Uh, again, uh, you can achieve higher sensitivity and specificity uh, if you select your patient accurately. Uh, the wide clinical application as uh, well. So other than diagnosis of angina, you can look for ischemia, ischemia burden, and uh, uh, there's a separate protocol for um, uh, undetermined aortic stenosis and viability where you use uh, low dose dobutamine stress echocardiography and for other uh, indeterminate mitral valve disease or pulmonary hypertension and LV reserve you can go slow and uh, keep on taking uh, the images. Um, the cons of this test is uh, you cannot offer uh, dobutamine stress echocardiogram in a patient who had a recent myocardial infarction uh, again, whatever the specificity and sensitivity of a test, if it goes to a wrong hand, your test is no good. Okay, so uh, it has to be done by a competent person. Uh, and uh, if your windows are challenging, your test is not going to be interpreted well. Uh, interpretation in a female or hypertensive patients and bundle branch block patients, it may be often challenging. And if you have baseline ST segment abnormalities, um, your interpretation might be challenged. Um, and then again, if you uh, 
unfortunately have a patient who has got very low arrhythmia threshold, then you can put them into arrhythmia. Um, and uh, dobutamin sometimes can cause very frequent uh, ventricular ectopics, which will make your interpretation uh, inaccurate and or challenging. So exercise stress echo, um, again, as I said, I normally offer them on a youngish population. Um, no um, older population in UK, sometimes you'll be surprised. I think this is the uh, situation in most of the Western world as well. Uh, there is uh, often you'll be surprised how many very fit 84 year olds around the uh, roads. Um, they, if that is the case and low um, probability of um, uh, ischemia, then you can often um, go for exercise stress echocardiogram. If they don't have any arthritis involving their knees and hips, they should be able to do exercise stress echocardiogram. So again, I will stop their uh, rate limiting drugs 48 hours before the test. Uh, you should get a 12 rate ECG at rest and blood pressure. I use Sonoview almost all my cases. Uh, bear in mind, if you use Sonoview, you have to change your probe settings to a, a contrast mode, and um, your assessment of the valve disease uh, will be difficult with the uh, contrast. But if you're, uh, if you're looking for ischemia as well as some sort of valve assessment, um, you probably should take them at baseline outside the protocol and uh, take aquarium pictures uh, off protocol at the end of the test on, on peak. Um, so that you should be remembering if you're doing it. And again, the protocol is absolutely the same. You take your baseline images, low stress images and peak and recovery. And the image sequences are exactly the same. And you should have continuous monitoring of blood pressure, heart rate and ECG uh, throughout the stages. And at the end, compare and analyze. Uh, complications for exercise stress echocardiogram is very little. Often you will terminate the test for fatigue. Um, sometimes there might be arrhythmia. Uh, you might provocate angina, but this is what we want to do. Um, and uh, myocardial infarction, I haven't seen it. I haven't heard uh, whichever hospitals I was rotated through. And if you're uh, using contrast, there is uh, sometimes there's a contrast reaction. Now the protocol is, um, uh, as you can see, that you will acquire your rest images for LV function, uh, regional wall motion abnormalities. If you're doing for a diastolic uh, dysfunction, you should get some uh, tissue uh, Doppler imaging, um, mitral uh, valve Dopplers and your gradients and uh, TR pressures and right ventricular function as well. Um, the protocol usually, uh, you will ask the patient to carry on with paddling on their bike Putting, there's a magic number of 50 uh, that will be flushed on the monitor of the exercise bike and we'll request the patient to keep paddling and keep the number in between 50 to 60 revs per minute. And uh, the difficulty of the test or the, um, uh, um, the it will ramp up 25 watts uh, in every three minutes or, uh, will continue. I often for the exercise test, uh, I, I uh, do not go for what um, uh, stress I'm going to give the patient. I usually go when I achieve the heart rate, I uh, try to log the images there or um, freeze the exercise on that stage. And if I um, acquire my images by that time, I'll stop the test and go through it. But uh, often if you're doing a stress test, whether it's exercise or dobutamine, make sure you uh, let, and a patient has reached their 85% of the target heart rate, uh, please continue uh, for at least a minute or so, uh, if it is safe to do so before you start acquiring your images. And I forgot to mention on my DSC protocol that uh, uh, on my peak stress, I'll often will take two peak stresses because sometimes you don't know whether you have to stop prematurely before uh, achieving 85% of your target heart rate. In that case, uh, achieving 80% of the target heart rate is a very good test uh, in the right uh, setup. So uh, I, I often, if I think the patient might struggle, I will take my first peak 
at a little bit lower stress, but I will always supplement this with a much more higher peak, proper peak, uh, and with significant amount of uh, target heart rate, uh, um, uh, one or two minutes after, or even five minutes after reaching the target heart rate, so that my accuracy of the interpretation is as accurate as possible. Again, um, recovery phase, you have to use the same protocol depending on what is the clinical question you are asking. Now, um, all test has got its own benefits. This is again a non-invasive test with very good uh, sensitivity and specificity as uh, much as a myocardial perfusion scan. Uh, there is wide application uh, uh, like ischemia, um, viability assessment, indeterminate mitral valve disease, pulmonary hypertension, diastolic dysfunction, to look for your LV reserve, your exercise capacity. And there's a frequent question that we often face uh, here. Uh, we often see young people with uh, mild or low normal LV function. Uh, and if the patient does some sort of uh, physical activity, sometimes you do not know whether this is a athlete's heart or this is a patient with cardiomyopathy. So this is a very unique test for athletes' heart and almost um, most of my colleagues will adopt exercise stress echocardiography for these type of patients rather than any other form of stress. Cons of this test is often, uh, you, again, if you're choosing the right patient, uh, your patient should be able to exercise. If you're choosing a wrong patient, uh, you'll be surprised that they will uh, develop fatigue a little bit earlier stage and you have to terminate the test prematurely. You will need wider space to um, uh, accommodate the bicycle. And again, interpretation is challenging. Uh, with exercise, you often get more challenging uh, windows, pundin plus rock, and if you have baseline ST segment abnormalities, your uh, interpretation of data could be inaccurate. Arrhythmia again comes into effect here. Uh, if you have uh, arrhythmia, a low arrhythmia threshold, then you might provocate a arrhythmia, or if there's um, a cardiomyopathy or underlying um, significant coronary artery disease, you might see very, very frequent ventricular ectopics uh, coming up as well. Any questions from dobutamin uh, or from uh, stress echocardiography, or you want to ask the question at the end, please feel free. It's a nice presentation. My question is, Money. The thing is, they, when you are doing an stress echo, you have to have good capacity of interpreting what you are seeing. And I find out very often the cardiographer who is doing that may not be interpreting it properly. And that's why in our country, uh, stress it, it is, uh, is much more uh, popular than stress echo. But functionally, and otherwise, I think stress echo is more informative. Yes. Particularly, uh, said, diagnosing, uh, uh, particularly in diagnosing coronary artery disease. Yes. If the patient is young, and I think they don't have much risk factors or smoking history, I go straight for CT coronary angiography. Yeah. And if the CT coronary angiography is abnormal, um, in a relatively elder patient, I will only ask for uh, a stress echocardiogram uh, and then go from there. For older population or who has got significant comorbidities, stress echocardiography is my first choice of investigation. Uh, I do not have access to the myocardial uh, perfusion imaging in my trust, so that's why it's probably higher on my um, uh, uh, referral. Uh, for stress echocardiography, but otherwise myocardial perfusion scan, if you're looking for the functional assessment, uh, is uh, superior and uh, less expensive than an MRI scan. Uh, so again, I think uh, you are, uh, Professor Odhati uh, Chaudhary, you're just uh, emphasizing the same thing. If Whatever the test is, whatever the good quality is the test, if the test is not interpreted accurately, it's not a good test. So uh, in UK, um, most of the um, stress echocardiograms will be done by consultants, uh, cardiographers, 
And uh, there are few echocardiographers who uh, are accredited and they're doing in few centers as well independently. Uh, so um, we are very um, uh, fortunate to work in this environment. Uh, and this is uh, often audited. Um, their echoes sometimes uh, like 10 samples randomly assessed by different physicians and then see whether the interpretation was correct or not. And um, we've got very strong network uh, in UK. So either it's uh, based on the same trust or a tertiary center. And often you'll be sharing your images uh, to say that I'm not sure what's actually going on. Can you please uh, have a look into my images and see if I'm missing anything? So we are fortunate. I appreciate that this is not the case in stress uh, in, in Bangladesh. I'm not sure how many centers in Bangladesh will be doing stress echocardiography. Monrad, can you tell? Very few. Uh, actually, none in, uh, in government sector. None in government sector. And, and uh, in uh, two or three. BSNU uh, does it. BSNU is not purely Spine government. Hospital, BSNU, uh, uh, yes. ever care. Okay, and uh, Asgur Ali Hospital. Asgur Ali Heart Foundation. Five yes. or six centers only. Okay. Okay. It is Karun Kitsar. It is Karun Ki, Amadir Halo Echocardiographer promotion. I came with the debutamine available number logistically hospital, government hospital at the Borobo Institute at some other Shigulo. Should you government hospital? The thing is the load of the patients. Right. Uh, you are fed up doing the normal equals, all the referrals and everything. You cannot afford time for doing any stress. Okay. Only out of curiosity, once in a blue moon, we do that to show the students how it should be done. That's it. And um, uh, in BSMMU, Professor Meshkat Sahar is particularly interested in doing this. And so they are doing it more or less uh, regularly. Only the only government institute. Right. I am. I am. This is the first time I am going to talk about this. I am going nuclear stress test. For some reason, I am going to talk about the nuclear perfusion imaging. I don't know. It is a cultural aspect. I am going to talk about the USA. Um, uh, Marzan Bolte Parbehata to me of Halo to Mother Rodigi Kirokum Hai. Amra Dubutaminates in nuclear stress of Beshikuri Hot, maybe safety reason or maybe it's available. Uh, Bangladesh, it is a coach coach in Ashram Tahun Kudi Pinek in the Porishun of the Shutumatru BSM with the Hai Atomic Energy Commissioner under it. Um, among Matru Bothai, a shop the Hai Agdin Hai, the Shutta Kubi Opro to Larkama the Ratoboro the Shirjuno. এখন সে ঢাকা মেডিকেল ওখানে ওই যে পেট এবং এমপি দুটো একসাথে একদম রেগুলার করে তবে ওটা স্পেসিফিক پیشنট আমরা मोस्टলি হোয়েন উই ওয়ান্ট টু সি দা ভায়াবিলিটি অনলি দেন উই সেন্ড ইট আচ্ছা স্যার কিন্তু ইসকেমিয়া ইসকেমিয়ার জন্য করা নো 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 ফর ইসকেমিয়া সিং উই ক্যানট দা দা টেস্ট ইজ কস্টলি এন্ড দা টাইম কনজিউমিং এন্ড দে ডু ইট অনলি টুইস উইকলি সো দ্যাটস ডিফিকাল্ট সো আমাদের প্র্যাকটিস in, in our practice in so I practice in Pennsylvania and in our practice we have a large practice where we do a ton of uh, stress imaging both uh, uh, stress echocardiogram uh, nuclear imaging every day almost uh, uh, 60 to 70 studies a day so I think the a big difference in practice uh, and uh, Dr. Rabia Khatun can comment um, so uh, here the stress tests are not done performed by a physician himself like there is a cardiologist in charge for the lab like when i am uh, uh, in charge of the stress stress lab the day i am uh, i'm responsible for close to 100 250 studies but there are several techs involved echo techs involved who are performing the studies in super in un, under my supervision so i think that's why the logistics uh, makes a huge difference. But uh, Dr. Rabia Khatun, uh, uh, from your excellent presentation, what I learned that in UK, uh, the stress test is performed directly by the physician. And uh, so there is no track for trained sonographers who can perform the test under supervision. 
No, I think you missed my second part of it. It's mostly done by the cardiologist, but uh, there is uh, training for um, echocardiographers as well. So there are several centers in um, all over the country. There will be um, like uh, physiologist uh, uh, supervised uh, stress echo, but I think the cardiologist has to be on site and responsible for the list. And uh, they usually, usually get low risk uh, stable angina patients on their list rather than high risk valve patients. But again, that also depends on center to center and the experience of the sonographer. Got it. Yeah, I think that is probably one of the limitations in Bangladesh that because we don't have, I, I don't think we have trained, that track is there that where you can train a separate sonographer track. Is that correct? Yeah. Bangladesh, right, right, sir? Mashari. Our thesis is a comparison between DAC and SPEC MPI. Almost comparable, the sensitivity 92% in SPEC MPI, and the DAC is 76-78% sensitivity to coronary disease. In the almost comparable, but the problem is the inter observer variability is very high in DAC. But in SPECT MPA, inter observer variability on a calm. It act the region at this which is a skilled man for is required for DAC, you know, Dovidon stress echo journal, Amra Judio may have unique protocol for the bottom. Kinto SPECT MPA Kitrikin to Athota skilled man for Dorkar Hanaka, just protocol one day, two day stress and rest protocol the Amra Kuribut. So anyway, Ashule the Jekunu test Ashule Potom Tajat to set the indication as a test ke interpret for you know J Jinista Dorkar behind the test procedure, the skip man for our tickets. In the in between the procedure, Shekhane, which is called a DC Judi Hai, it is a skill person could say by spectre payo, the skill person could say. Overall. Center glue is the most disseminated court. The chai, a mother author to go set up in the business for a government sector. Night Jacobata Bullo, also Shatta Pastor Center, Air Charo with the square Arabata Hospitalo high into at the widespread a high now, but limited scope a high. The Yamar friend Shakil can get the Ohot say Maman Singh a catch corre. He is saying, uh, Shakil to me bolts it to me to mother of a dubutam is stress corre. Take it to me Nija Corona key to my. Take uh, supporting hand at uh, we we have done some cases we don't do it on regular basis but we do it in Mamesi medical college non-invasive cardiac lab and we have done some uh dobutamine stress strain also as stress strain is more acceptable in a sense that it gives a quantitative idea we don't do it. We have set up. We don't, though we don't do it on a regular uh, basis. But we last four months, how many did you Not more than six, I would say, sir. Eight, eight. I am here to tell you that out of curiosity, our students that join actors with a curry, they have to actually count the amount. They have to academy chorcha is our amra hato curry dekhachi. They take this habit curry. Sir, we, we should adopt on regular basis, sir. That's true. Hmm. Well, Amar, Amar, Dhaka Amar, Dhaka 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 I cannot afford the time. Amar, I cannot afford the time. 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 That's the reality. That's the reality. Why are you in the ICBD? It's a load. It's a load. It's a load. মানে একাডেমি চর্চা যে আমাদের কি কি হ্যাম্পার হচ্ছে তার একটা বড় কারণ হলো স্বাদ এবং সাধ্যের মধ্যে যে ডিসক্রেপেন্সি সেটা এটাই না এখন এনএসডিবিটি তে এটা হিউম্যানলি ইম্পসিবল বিকজ হচ্ছে যে আপনার যদি ঘন্টায় যদি আমাকে 60টা থেকে 80টা ইকো করতে হয় ঘন্টায় খালি রোগীকে ওঠানো নামানো নামাতেই তো 3 4 মিনিট 5 মিনিট চলে যায় আর Proper counseling, addressing, assessing, everything on a. Ah, that is just a small part of the 
আজম ভাই আর মনোয়ার ভাই আপনারা যে এনআইসিবিটি তে করেন এগুলো কি আপনারা নিজ হাতে করেন না আপনাদের টেকনিশিয়ান আছে আমাদের টেকনিশিয়ান শুধুমাত্র নাম লেখা টাকার ব্যাপারে এটা সব অল ফিজিশিয়ান করে এখন ধরো আমাদের আমাদের যে মিড লেভেল ডাক্তার তারা করে এবং কখনো কখনো যে গুরুত্ব দরকার স্পেশালি অপিনিয়ন দরকার তখন আমরা একটু সিনিয়ররা আমরা ইনভলভ থাকি তখন আমরা যাই সেটাতে আমরা অ্যাটেন্ড मोटामुटी ভালোই হচ্ছে কিন্তু অন্যান্য যেটা নন করোনারি কার্ডিয়াক সিটি সেটা কিন্তু এখনো বাংলাদেশে ওই পরিমাণ এক্সপার্টাইজ ডেভেলপ করে নাই দুই একটা জায়গা আছে না হ্যাঁ মনোয়া ওই যে করোনারি সিটি अवेलेबिलिटी আমাদের আসলে আছে কিন্তু সমস্যা হচ্ছে যে ইট ইজ নট টু মাচ পপুলার কারণ হচ্ছে কি پیشنট হচ্ছে প্রাইস কস্টিং ইস্যু প্রাইস ইস্যু একটা হয় একটা মেজর ইস্যু दोष दीबना कारण रिपोर्ट तो होल जो गुल रिपोर्ट देखे मार्शाला बस भलो बस क्वालिटीफुल रिपोर्ट देखे छवि देखी नाई सो आई कैनट कमेंट ऑन द accuracy of the interpretation but amar kache report gula khub detailed mone hoyse ebong amar mone bangladesh in especially in dhaka or other peripheral centers uh, we should do more ct scan amader mani me bangladesh er data to oto bhalo bhabe follow kori na kintu tar poro dekhchi je mani amader young around 40 to 50 এজ গ্রুপের মধ্যে করোনারি আর্টারি ডিজিজের প্রবণতাটা অনেক বেড়ে গেছে যেটা আমাদের লাস্ট জেনারেশনে অতটা ছিল না তো আমার মনে হয় এই গ্রেডের জন্য এই গ্রুপ অফ পিপলের জন্য সিটি এনজিওগ্রাম ইজ দা পারফেক্ট টেস্ট এটা সেরকম কোনো স্কিল সেটের দরকার নাই সো রিমোট অঞ্চলও আমার মনে হয় এটা अवेलेबल থাকা উচিত এবং बेहतरीबिलिटी कारणिम मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट कम्स बैक अलमोस्ट इक्ल टू 
reducing risk of heart attack and cardiovascular death. Na ischemia trial er pore to obosshoi CT angiogram er projonota ta orekto ku bere chhe eta kono sandeho nei kintu kotha hocche je amra etake ekhon advocate korchi amra encourage korchi amra bibhinno jagay shetake message to kore distribute korar chesto korchi ebong amader ekhane kintu goto bochhor december mashe jagat taro lords chilo se CT angiogram er upore she besh kichu eta feature talk o diyeche ebong I hope and I believe actually the next guideline it should be considered as a class one indication for to detect coronary disease vulnerability plaque or serious consequences detection of genetic attack class one ni asha hobe among people are working for that way tarullo kas korche esc o kas korche amar mone hoy within next year i am sure the next next year we will get the message प्रतिरोधी लोकजन का नाम কারণ হলো তার ওটা একেবারে ইনসিগনিফিকেন্ট ডিজিজ যেখানে আমার সিটি এনজি তে বলে ইসতো 90% 99% নিশ কিন্তু আমাদের হ্যাঁ আমাদের এখানেও এটা বেশ কমন পিকচার যে আপনার সিটি বেশ স্কেয়ারি একটা রিপোর্ট দিলো কিন্তু আপনার করনি অ্যাঞ্জিওগ্রামে দেখা গেল ইনসিগনিফিকেন্ট ডিজিজ কিন্তু এখানে আপনার সিটি লিমিটেশনটাও জানতে হবে সিটি কিন্তু যখন এক্সেসিভ ক্যালসিফিকেশন থাকবে তখন কিন্তু বুমিং ইফেক্ট হয় যার কারণে আপনি লুমিনাল স্টেনোসিস কতটা সেটা কিন্তু মিস ইন্টারপ্রিটেশন হয় এবং মোস্ট অফ দ্য সেন্টারে এফএফআর সিটি আমাদের এখানেও নাই সো দেখা যায় যে মানে যেখানে টু মাচ ক্যালসিফিকেশন ওখানে লুমিনাল স্টেনোসিসটা আসলে সিটি দিয়ে জাজ করা যায় না আর সেই জন্যই হয়তো আপনার इंटरप्रिटेशनिंग मान रिपोर्ट कर दी 
মানে রেজিস্ট্রিও দিয়ে দিলাম স্টিল 26 ইয়ার্স এর কোয়ারেন্টাইন আটার ডিজিজে রিপোর্ট করেছে বিভিন্ন পেরিফেরি সবকিছু সব একদম সুন্দর রিপোর্ট করেছে কোন পেরিফেরি রিভার্সিবল কোন পেরিফেরি ইরিভার্সিবল সব সুন্দর করে রিপোর্ট করেছে বাট আলটিমেটলি দা پیشنট দ্যাট ফিমেল ওয়াজ এ پیشنট উইথ এআরভিডি আমার <laughs> 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 মানে আমাদের দেশে যেহেতু রিসোর্স আমাদের কম ম্যাল প্র্যাকটিসটার জন্য যে সবাই বিভিন্ন সময় পত্রিকা বা নিউজে সবাই পপুলার হয়ে যাচ্ছে ভাইরাল হয়ে যাচ্ছে কিন্তু এই যে জিনিসগুলো যাদের অডিট করার কথা যাদের কোয়ালিটি কন্ট্রোল করার কথা তাদের জন্য অনেকের ভালো কাজগুলো মানে আসছে না মিডিয়ায় মিডিয়াতে শুধু খারাপ বা মানে রং ডুইংসটাই আসছে ভালো কিছু আসছে না এখন আমরা যারা বাইরে থাকি তখন যাদের রিলেটিভরা কোয়েশ্চেন করে বা পরিচিত কেউ যখন ইনভেস্টিগেশন গুলা পাঠায় অবভিয়াসলি আমাদের এনজিওগ্রাম বা সিটি স্ক্যানের সিডিটা দেখার সুযোগ হয় না সো রিপোর্টের উপরেই রিলাই করতে হয় প্লাস দেশের সাথে যে এই যেই পার্সনটা রিপোর্টটা করলো তাকে আমি পার্সোনালি চিনি না আমি জানি না সে কতটা ভালো রিপোর্ট করে সো যদিও এটা খুবই মানে অসম্মানজনক একটা কথা কিন্তু তারপরও আমি দেখেছি যে মানে রিলায়বিলিটা রিলায়বিলিটি অফ দা টেস্ট ডিপেন্ডস অন দা পারসন বিহাইন্ড দা মেশিন এটা মানে ভেরি মাচ এ প্রবলেম ইন বাংলাদেশ তো এই ক্ষেত্রে সরকারেরই কিছু একটা করতে হবে এটা কারো ব্যক্তিগতভাবে তো করা সম্ভব না তো সবাই যদি হ্যাপি থাকেন আমি কি পরের টপিকে যাব আমি আসলে নিজে অনেক কিছু শিখেছি আমরা আসলে অ্যাট্রোপিন ব্যবহার করি না আমাদের সাথে বলেছিলাম যে ঠিক আছে আমি মাইকার্ডেল পারফিউশন করে দিব সেগুলো কোন এক সময় আমরা হয়তো আলাপ করলে আমাদের রোগীদের জন্য বাংলাদেশে আমি মনোয়ার ভাইয়ের উদ্দেশ্যে বলবো যে আমার আসলে এত দূর চলে আসছি কার্ডিওলজিতে আমি কিন্তু এখন পর্যন্ত একটা লেকচারও শুনি নাই এক্সারসাইজ ইসিজির উপরে তো অনেক কিছু শিখেছি আমি স্কুল এবং খুবই ভালো এবং ডিটেলড প্রেজেন্টেশন ছিল আপনার তুমি যখনই শুনবার মনে হয় কোনো লেকচার দিচ্ছে চোখকার মধ্যে সবকিছু বাদ দিয়ে শোনার জন্য বসে যাবা লেকচার শোনার জন্য আমরা মুখিয়ে থাকি মনোর ভাই মনোর ভাইয়ের কাছ থেকে আসলে এত কিছু শিখলাম আজকে আমরা তো করি ইটিটি কিন্তু এত পয়েন্ট আসলে তো মাথায় থাকে না আমাদের এখানে আমাদের আসলে ইটিটি করাই হয় না আমার মানে একদম এক্সট্রিমলি লো রিস্ক পেশেন্টদের জন্য করা হচ্ছে তাও ধরেন অ্যারিদমিয়ার জন্য যারা ফ্লেকেনাইড বা এইচসিএম پیشنট তাদের এক্সারসাইজ ক্যাপাসিটিটা দেখার জন্য ওগুলি আইদার হয়তো আমাদেরকে থাকে আমরা जस्ट পিছনে বসে হয়তো কোনো অ্যাডমিনিস্ট্রেটিভ কাজ করি ফিজিওলজিস্টরাই যা করার করছে ইন্টারপ্রিটেশন আমাদের করতে হয় না সো আমরা এই ক্ষেত্রে বলবো যে খুবই লাকি আর ডায়াগনোসিস অফ স্টেবল এনজাইনা মানে 
আমরা আমি এখন পর্যন্ত একটাও রিকোয়েস্ট করি নাই ডায়াগনোসিস এর জন্য রাইট রাইট আমাদের এখানে আসলে ইটিটিটিটা করা মেইন মোস্টলি রেফারাল আসে হচ্ছে প্রাইমারি কেয়ার ফিজিশিয়ান তারা তারাই ইটিটি রেফার করে এবং তারপরে যখন ইটিটিটা ইনকনক্লুসিভ হয় তখন দেখা যায় যে হয়তো তখন আমাদের কাছে আসে এবং তখন আমরা হয়তো ডিফারেন্ট মডালিটি অফ ইমেজিং গুলো अप्लाई করি ইটিটা মেইনলি পারফর্ম রিকমেন্ডেড বা রেফারড হয় হচ্ছে প্রাইমারি কেয়ার ফিজিশিয়ান থেকে বা যেহেতু মানে প্র্যাকটিস প্যাটার্নটা এদের এরকম আর কি যে ইন্টারনাল মেডিসিন যারা ফিজিশিয়ান আছেন তারা সরাসরি ইটিটি অর্ডার করে দেন তাদের پیشنটের জন্য এবং পরে সেখান থেকে আমরা যদি কনক্লুশনে আসতে না পারি সেখান থেকে সেকেন্ডারি ইমেজিং স্ট্রেস টেস্ট গুলো অথবা অন্যান্য মডালিটি গুলো করা হয় সেটাই এর প্র্যাকটিস আচ্ছা শাকিল ভাই এক কোশ্চেন করেছিলেন যে স্ট্রেস স্ট্রেইন আপনারা অলসো করছেন মমেন সিং এ আমি জানি না যে আপনাদের মানে সেখানে ইন্টারপ্রিটেশনটা কেমন আমি একজন প্রফেসরের সাথে কাজ করেছি যে স্ট্রেইন ইমেজিং করে স্ট্রেস একোতে সো অল প্লেন পিকচার কোয়ালিটি যাই হোক তারপরে স্ট্রেইন করছে কিন্তু এটা খুব আমার কাছে মনে হয় যে খুবই টাইম কনজিউমিং এবং আননেসেসারি ইউ ক্যান অ্যাভয়েড অল দোজ কাইন্ড অফ রিসার্চ থিং জাস্ট বাই গিভিং সন অফ ইউ অ্যাকোয়ার ভেরি গুড বেস লাইন পিকচার্স অ্যান্ড ট্রাই টু মেনটেন গুড কোয়ালিটি পিকচার্স থ্রু আউট যদি আপনার বেস লাইন পিকচার সাব অপটিমাল হয় অন টু ডি ইউ উইল নেভার গেট গুড কোয়ালিটি পিকচার ইন স্ট্রেস whether it's dobutamin or exercise so on that um, scenario i will say apni jokhon stress strain niben apnar sonoview already out of equation you cannot st- uh, use sonoview so um, if you are doing for research purposes uh, for a specific case strain is very good for myocardial deformation or a segmental analysis uh, but otherwise ami amar uh, আমি ঠিক করে ফেলেছি যে আমি আমার ক্লিনিক্যাল প্র্যাকটিসে করব না অলদো আমি একজনের সাথে কাজ করেছি যে পিওরলি স্ট্রেইন অ্যানালাইসিস করে স্ট্রেস একোতে আমাদের দেশে এখনো রুটিনলি সনোভিউ অথবা ডিফিনিটি পাওয়া যায় না রুটিনলি কোনো রকম अवेलेबिलिटी নাই জাস্ট প্লেইন স্ট্রেইন ইকোটা হয় করায় করে কেউ কেউ অল্প কিছু মানুষ আর কন্ট্রাস্টিকো হয় না বললেই চলে স্যালাইন কন্ট্রাস্ট ছাড়া তো আমার জাস্ট এই প্ল্যাটফর্মে যেহেতু আমি রেগুলার আসতে পারি না আমি একটা মানে ভেবে দেখার প্রশ্ন দিয়ে দেখি সেটা হচ্ছে যে বাংলাদেশের যারা বাইরে আছে তারা বাংলাদেশের এই কার্ডিওলজির কয়েকটা সেক্টরে যদি কিছু করা যায় সম্ভব তার মানে হ্যাঁ তার মধ্যে তার মধ্যে আমার যেটা মনে হয় আমি যেটা ফিল করি একজন নন ইনভেসিভে কাজ করা মানুষ হিসেবে সেটা হচ্ছে যে ডোমোটামিন স্ট্রেস ইকো অর্থাৎ স্ট্রেস ইকোটা আমাদের দেশে ডেভেলপ করাটা দরকার পপুলারাইজ করা দরকার এক নাম্বার দুই নাম্বার হচ্ছে আমাদের দেশে নন করোনারি কার্ডিয়াক সিটি এটা একটু এফিসিয়েন্সি বাড়ানো দরকার আর মোস্ট ইম্পর্টেন্ট যেটা আমরা এখন খুবই অভাব অনুভব করছি সেটা হচ্ছে সিএমআর কার্ডিয়াক ম্যাগনেটিক রেজোনেন্স সেটা ডেভেলপ করতে হবে একটা দুইটা সেন্টারে गवर्नमेंट পর্যায়ে শুধুমাত্র বিএসএমএমইউ আর নন गवर्नमेंट পর্যায়ে শুধুমাত্র পপুলার ডায়াগনস্টিক সেন্টার এটা এই 18 কোটি দেশের মানুষের জন্য এটা কিছুই না কিংবা সেখানেও কোনো মানে দেখার কেউ নাই একজন দুজন করছেন কি করছেন কোয়ালিটি কন্ট্রোলের কোনো ব্যাপার এখনো নাই এই দিকগুলো আমি বলবো যে একটু হেল্প করা যায় কিনা বাইরের ইয়ে থেকে সেটা হইতে পারে অবশ্যই আমি আমি অলওয়েজ আমি লুক ফরওয়ার্ড করছি যে কিভাবে বাংলাদেশের কার্ডিওলজিস্টদের সাথে কোলাবোরেট করা যায় রাইট সো আমি ইনশাআল্লাহ 15 তারিখ 15 ডিসেম্বর বাংলাদেশে আসছি ফর 2 উইকস যদি আমাকে ওই সময়ের মধ্যে কোনো একটা সেশন দেন উচিত তবে অবশ্যই আমাদের মাথায় সব সময় থাকে যে কিভাবে আমরা টেকনোলজি ট্রান্সফার করতে পারি এবং আমরা যে এখন মাঝে মাঝে প্রত্যেক বছর একজন দুজন করে এখানে নিয়ে আসার চেষ্টা করছি তো এগুলোকে আসলে আরো মোর ফর্মাল ওয়েতে যদি আমরা করতে পারি যে 
কেউ একজন এসে চার সপ্তাহ কোথাও হয়তো ইউকে অথবা ইউএসএ তে চার সপ্তাহ আমরাতে কোন একটি পার্টিকুলার সাবজেক্ট অথবা টপিক ধরে আস্তে আস্তে এগোতে পারি এই অনেক রাত হয়ে গেছে খোদা হাফেজ थैंक यू স্যার সবাইকে অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ মনোয়ার ভাই এবং রাবিয়া थैंक यू थैंक यू মনোয়ারটা সবসময়ই ভালো বলে রাবিয়া ভালো লেগেছে थैंक यू ভাই খুব ভালো লাগলো আর স্যার তো আর ওয়াদুদ স্যার হচ্ছে আমাদের সবার বড় বৃক্ষ সেই ওয়াদুদ স্যার তো সবাই চিনি ও সো মানে আমি তাদের এগুলা দেখে আমি অসম্ভব মানে কি বলবো আনন্দিত হই